Okay, chemistry. This is the answers video for day 67, reaction mechanisms. So we're going to go through the first few questions kind of quickly here. What is a rate mechanism? So it is a series of elementary steps that a reaction goes through. So it doesn't just happen in one step in most cases. Sometimes it does. But in many cases, it could take two, three, or even more steps than that. In this class, we'll limit it to probably three. So it's the series of small reactions that take place to get the overall reaction to get from its reactants to its products. Okay, what is an elementary step? And it's what I just said. It's one of those it's one of those small steps that you um, that the reaction goes through to get from overall reaction to get from reactants to products. What is an intermediate? An intermediate is something that is created in the first step. Let's take a two-step reaction, two, two elementary step reaction. It's created by the first step and then it's used up by the second step. So it doesn't begin, it doesn't appear at the beginning of the overall reaction and it doesn't, it doesn't exist at the end of the overall reaction. It's created in the middle of the reaction and it's used up in the middle of the reaction. So you don't see it in the overall reaction. <clears throat> what is a catalyst? That's almost just the opposite of an intermediate. It appears at the beginning of the overall reaction, uh, at the beginning of the reaction, and it appears at the end of the reaction. So it doesn't get consumed or used up by the reaction. It's not, it doesn't take part in the reaction. All it does is in some fashion, it speeds up the reaction, usually by lowering the activation energy. So you'll see examples of intermediate and catalyst uh, as we go through this. Molecularity. Molecularity is how many molecules are involved in a reaction. If it's just a single molecule, so say like a decomposition reaction where a molecule breaks into two different atoms or, or compounds, that would be unimolecular. It just starts with a single molecule. If it's two molecules and they have to hit each other and break apart to cause the reaction, that's called bimolecular. Bi means two. And if it has to have three molecules hit each other at the same time, then that's tri or ter excuse me, ter molecular, T-E-R, which means three, ter molecular. Okay, now I'm going to skip to the back because I told you on this that um, the only problem I'm going to ask you about is the very last page, and that is page seven, and it's this reaction right here. Now this is done in the um, lecture video, so. If you want to see this done with PowerPoint and with animations, you can see it there. But I'm going to go ahead and do it here because it is going to be on the quiz. All right, so one important fact that I left out here is which is the fast and which is the slow step. So the first step is the fast step and the second step is the slow step. So think about what that means. It means the first step is going to go through this and produce N2O2 really fast. Then the slow step is going to use that, but it does it very slowly. It takes its time using the N2O2. It combines it with the Br2 that was in the original reaction, and it gives you 2NOBr, which is the product of the original reaction. So what will happen is this will be produced very fast. This second step picks up some of it, but it's really slow. So a lot of this is going to be sitting around in the solution. So what will happen is, since this is a reversible reaction, it will go back and decompose into NO and NO. So this will go in two directions. It'll go forward, it'll go down here, but it'll also go backwards. So that complicates the process a little bit and it makes the situation a little more complicated. Okay, so <clears throat> what we're going to do is we're going to write the rate law for this reaction. And now remember, we're an overall reaction. You cannot assume that the coefficients are the exponents. They're not. They have nothing to do. Those have to be determined experimentally. However, in elementary reactions, the coefficients are the exponents. But let's go ahead. So let's go ahead and write this the best that we can with what we have. So what it's going to be is rate. Okay, so our final rate, the rate law for this reaction is got to include the reactants, NO and, B, and BR. Um, that's BR2. We don't know, we don't know what these exponents are. But we're going to be able to determine what they are and what this actual rate law is from down here. Now the rule was is that the rate of the slow step is going to be the, the rate law for the slow step is going to be the rate law for the overall reaction. Okay, so let's look at the rate law for the slow step. 
its rate equals K2, so that subscript 2 means it refers to, to step 2, of this reactant N2O2, and since the coefficient here is a 1, that becomes the exponent here. You don't see it written, but you can write it there if you want. That's a 1 right there, okay? All right, so remember for an elementary reaction, you can use the coefficients as exponents. You just got to keep that rule in mind. Okay, Br2, same thing. It's got a coefficient of 1, so that means the exponent here is going to be 1. All right, so this is a 1 right here. So that should be the rate law for the overall reaction, but you notice it's different. Why is that? What's the issue here? Well, the rate law for step two includes the intermediate N2. So that's an example of an intermediate. It is created in the first step and it's completely used up in the second step and doesn't appear in the final products. So the rate law here includes the intermediate here, but it can't do that. The rate law for the overall reaction can only have the reactants of the overall reaction, which is NO and Br2. So it has to look something like that. So this cannot be in the, we said the slow step rate law is the rate law for the overall reaction, but it can't be because that N2O2 is not allowed to be in the rate law for this because you don't see N2O2 here. Only the reactants you actually see here can be in the final rate law. So what we have to do is figure out a way to substitute the N2O2 here so that it only has NO. You already have the Br2. You see that there and there. That's good. You got to figure out a way to, get, to substitute the N2O2 out and get in NO. So how do we do that? And here we see that NO plus NO produces N2O2. So we have a relationship between N2O2, which we need to get rid of here, and NO, which can appear in the final reaction. So we can kind of change this to this. We can call NO plus NO as simply 2NO. That's the same as that. It's just like algebra class. X plus X equals 2X. Okay, then you have this. And then you have n 2 O2. So that's why the rate law for step one is NO plus NO2 NO. Remember this coefficient can be the exponent, so there it is. The rate equals K1 NO squared because of that coefficient right there. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to say this is really two reactions, okay? And it's one of them is... Okay, so a reversible reaction up here is really two reactions. Okay, one of them is this. It's what you see up here. It's NO. It's 2NO. Let's call it 2NO. And I'm going to do just a single arrow because I'm just going to do the forward part of this reaction. Remember, double arrow means it goes both ways. So that's going to be N2O2. So now we're going to write the rate law for that. And that's going to be rate of the forward reaction, we'll call this the forward reaction. So it's step one, forward reaction, so it's NO, 2NO produces this. The rate law for that is going to be, and we'll use the, the rate constants K forward. I'll put FOR. In the video, I put just four. And it's going to be concentration of NO squared. Now we're going to do step one reverse. That's the reaction going back this way, going from right to left. And that's going to give us N2O2 going back to this. So the rate for that would be rate equals K reverse reaction going backwards and it's simply this with the coefficient of one to the first power okay and now what you have to remember is that at equilibrium okay when these are going back and forth at the same rate these two numbers the rates will be the same okay so that means that these two parts of the equation will equal each other 
So we're interested in a situation where they're balanced. And of course, equilibrium is the next unit we're going to study. But these are balanced back and forth. They're going back and forth at the same rate. So that means these two are equal to each other. So we're going to come down here and say K. And I'll leave the exponent 1 off. So it's going to look like that. So what we want to do is solve for N2O2. Why? Because we're trying to find out an expression in terms of NO that we can substitute for N2O2. So if we do that, then we can get an NO in here, which we're allowed to have in our final rate, uh, rate law. So what I'm going to do is divide both sides by this. All right, these cancel. And I'm going to go ahead and put the N2O2 over on the left side because that's usually what you do when you solve for a variable. So N2O2 equals, okay. All right, so now what we can do is we can go ahead. We know what N2O2 equals this. So where we see this right here, Remember, the slow step rate law is the overall rate law, but we have to get rid of this. So where we see N2O2, that, we're going to put, get this on screen more. We're going to put this entire expression. Let me say that again. Where we see N2O2, there's N2O2. N2O2 equals this. So we can substitute N2O2 here for all of this. So I'm going to come down below and do that. So remember that rate law is going to be the one that's going to be our overall rate law. So rate equals K2. You got to put that in. And now here comes the substitution. Instead of this, we're going to write this. So it's K forward. And then the rest of this is the BR2. Okay, so we took this. We took this and we put this in instead. So be sure you're comfortable with that. Okay, now what about all these K's here? K2 times K forward divided by K reverse. Well, they're all constants. So you can just combine them into one big K. So it's constant times constant over constant is going to be equal some other constant. And so that K is going to be the overall rate, con rate constant. We're just going to call it K. In other words, it becomes this K right here. These three K's, got to kind of move back and forth. These three K's multiplied together, multiplied and divided, are going to equal that K. Okay, so there it is, K. And then we have this. And then we have the BR2 right there. And there you go. You ha now have the slow step rate law, this, written in terms of only the reactants of the original overall reaction, NO and BR. So this, this is the rate law for the overall reaction. Okay, and so that's your final answer for this, okay? So... The only other way we could have determined these exponents here, a 2 and a 1, is by the experimental method. But here, using elementary steps, we were able to figure them out because you're able to use coefficients as your exponents, and so we were able to figure out what these exponents are, okay? All right, that's that, and if we wanted to, uh, we could find two concentrations and the rate, and then we would still need to solve for K. But anyway, that's the end of this problem. All right, so now I'm going back to page one. I'm going to do number six. So the overall reaction, here it is right there. You can read that, except this should be a plus sign, not an equal sign, okay? So be sure to change that. There's no reason you would ever have an equal sign in the middle of a chemical reaction. Okay, it's been experimentally determined that the rate law for this equation is this. So it only has reactants, H2O2 and the um and the i and this should be i minus so a couple corrections there now you notice it doesn't have one of the reactants we'll talk about that in a minute but it ha it can only have it doesn't have products in it so it's first thing it says is write the elementary rate laws next to each step so here we go right here and you can use the coefficients as exponents Okay, there it is. 
So uh, again, all the coefficients throughout all these reactants are ones, so all the exponents are ones. And so you don't really have to understand how this is proceeding. You just gotta have to understand that H2 plus I2 is gonna produce HOI and OH minus hydroxide. The hydroxide is gonna go into step two and be added to a hydronium ion to produce water. There should not be a negative sign there. Okay, so I'm, I wanna make these corrections uh, on this video here. Then the HOI kind of hangs around until the third step and it's added to uh, the second hydroxide Hydronium ion. You notice up here there's two of them. So one of them gets used here and one of them there. And then plus the iodide ion. And you notice you have two iodide ions up there. One of them is used in the first step, one of them in the third step. And what you get out is I2 plus H2O, which is the which is the products of the overall reaction. Okay, so that takes care of A. Which step is the slow step? Okay, so if this is the rate law for the overall reaction. So which one of these has a rate law that matches that? And the answer is step one. So step one is the slow step, okay? Why? Because this is the same as this. It's always the slowest step through rate mechanism that is the overall, why? Because the reaction can't go any faster than its slowest step. Its slowest step is gonna hold up all the other steps. So it, the overall rate loss, uh, overall reactions rate law can't be, it's gonna be the same as its slowest step. Just remember that. Okay, that was B. So I'm asking you to write these down. I'm not gonna write them. You go ahead and write them, okay? C. What name is given to the slow step because it identifies how fast the reaction can proceed? It's called the rate determining step. Rate determining step because it determines the rate of the reaction. Okay? All right. Let's keep going on. Now I'm getting problems out of the AP textbook. This is a college level textbook. So you're do dealing with some real problems here. Okay? Not all of them are going to be easy.